Welcome back to my new video. This video, we are going to look at how we can install the PyFlink. Um, so if you have Python already installed, you should consider these versions from 3.7 upwards. And then from your terminal, you can check the version of Python you have. Um, we are going to create a virtual environment, which I know Python uh, users are already aware of. And then you run this command. Um, Python hyphen and pip install Apache Fling 1.18.1. Okay, so let's go to our terminal. I'm already in this directory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Python 3.10 and then create that environment. Once we create that environment, we want to activate that environment. Um, after activating that environment, we can say Python, Python 3.10 hyphen M pip install Apache flank. Okay, this is going to install the latest version, uh, which is 1.18.1. One one one. Okay, so let's install that. If we get any error, we'll fix it. Um, but I'm hoping that um, it's going to work. Yeah, so I think it's working. So while it's still installing, um, I have this. Uh, PyCharm here, which we are going to use for our development. Um, I'm going to create a new folder, which I'm going to call it demo underscore v1. And then inside it, I'm going to create a new Python file, which I'm going to call demo.py. Um, let's keep checking. OK, so I think everything is properly installed, so I'm just going to upgrade this it's not necessary but i just do it for um, the fun of it once we do this and then we created our file uh, we can now start writing our program so i'm just going to import some few libraries so we're going to say from pyflink.stable import environment settings as well as table environment. And then we're going to create another object called settings is equal to environment settings dot in streaming mode. And then we're going to say table EMV is equal to table environment dot create. Um, environment settings is equal to settings. Okay. Then from here, we're going to create a table which we're going to call table env dot from elements and then we're going to pass a list of tuples okay just a very basic one i'm just going to say one comma let's say this is a country let's call it canada canada comma usa and then the next thing we want to pass is the schema, okay? Um, so the schema, we can pass a list of names, ID, and then possibly um, country, okay? So that is how we'll pass it. And then we want to run this table. So we're going to say table.execute.print, okay? That is all we want to do here. Uh, we can also print the schema of the table. So let's say print table.get schema of this table. Okay, very simple and straightforward. So I'm just going to run this. Once I run this, we just have to wait for the results. You see, this is the schema, the ID, and then the country is a string. You see, this is the output, the ID, and then the country. Okay, so it's it's very, very simple and straightforward. 
Now we have everything set up. Um, everything set up. So I hope you like this video. And um, the last thing that I want to talk about is the connectors. Um, remember that with um, Flink, it has these uh, connectors, the source, and then the sync connectors. Um, so we are going to look at majority of all these um, connectors. And then also the Pi Flink, um, it has a, um, a connection between the JVM and then the Pi VM, which is a bi-directional communication um, because Pi Flink was actually created using the JVM. So Pi VM is kind of establishing a connection between the JVM and then on the far right hand side, we have the Pi Flink cluster, which is connected to the JVM. Okay, so that, that is the um, little thing I want to add. So um, good, you made it working. Um, I'll see you in the next one.